The Iowa Nut Growers Association research site is nestled on the campus of Indian Hills Community College in Centerville, Iowa. The site was the brainchild of local resident and longtime black walnut grower Bill Hansen. Working with instructor Bryden Castor and with input from Tom Wall and Kathy Dice at Red Fern Farm, the first seedlings were established more than a decade ago. The site currently boasts the following species, pecans, chestnuts, black walnuts, butternuts, hickories, hazelnuts, and even some persimmons. Many of these species are grafted cultivars or experimental genotypes being tested for cold hardiness, disease resistance, and productivity. Many of the trees and shrubs are producing and starting to bear nuts so naturally, folks are interested in what's planted here. Bryden Castor, instructor with the Indian Hills Sustainable Ag Program, gives a brief history of the site and its establishment to participants of the Southern Iowa Agroforestry Field Tour on Saturday, October 2nd, before heading out into the field to see some of the grafted trees and shrubs. Some chestnuts, and the persimmons especially, are loaded this year. Let's go take a look. Um, here's a, our chestnut that's been producing. Um, and so this is loaded up pretty well. We can bring you right through here. Um, if you're going to pick up any of the holes, I recommend gloves. <laughs> uh, but if any of them fall, if you want to open them up, you can see some of these are starting to split open um, right here. And there's the chestnut size this year on these trees is very good. They're really big. Where are they at? There's some right here. Oh yeah! You see right in there. You see a couple more up higher. They're very uh, so they'll split open like that maybe. and then drop to the ground. So some some varieties will split the the hole split open on the tree and drop the nuts to the ground. Uh -huh. um, this will do a little of both. Um, you can see some of these that are open and empty. And, and if you wanted to, you don't want to be standing under when you do this. But Nerik could go stand in there and shake that. I <laughs> Sacrificial lamb. Yeah. We can probably get a few to fall, maybe. They're holding on still pretty tight. But if you want to pull any of these off, uh, feel free if you want to get a closer look. Who's cool? Uh, Where's our guy with the nippers? Did we lose right him? Here. If you get one on the ground, yeah. the best way to handle them is we'll step yeah. on each side so with your shoes. Yeah. Open that up. A lot of these trees. Oh, nice. Those are some oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. So I suppose those would classify as jumbos, maybe. Those are pretty big. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> do we know what kind this is? Uh, this is just a Chinese chestnut. I don't know the variety name. I can look back to some of our orchard maps right, and tell you. Know. <laughs> just lots of issues. They work, but this is a lot cleaner look, and for our purpose, we want it to look nice and then put it under the heat. Oh, look, it fell to the ground. Oh, slick. Is your three? Yeah. Three plump ones or two plump ones and a... Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that. So you'll have your traditional uh, half moon shape with the flat edge and then the one in the middle, double flat. Cool. We have this big, beautiful pecan tree, and it has nuts, absolutely. So there's several spots where the pecans are just about ready to, to drop off in a couple of places. Oh yeah, just loaded. Some of these branches are really heavy laden. Oh, okay, right here. So that with this one is, yep, there it is. There's our pecan. Woo, boy, one of my favorites. So could we take a real quick uh, poll here? Raise your hand if you call these pecans. Oh, there's a handful. What about pecans? Okay, definitely pecans have it. We're a pecan crowd here. California. What do they call them in California? 
Pistachios? That's not even the worst. <laughs> I'm in one of our grafting clinics. Uh, this tree was basically just topped. And it, was, it was probably this big around at the time, maybe four or five inches. Um, and I don't know who was in charge of this one. We had, a, we had three or four different guys kind of took groups out to graft. And I, I came around to this one. I didn't know they were doing it. But they had sawed this whole thing off, which is one of our nicest trees that we had growing. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> what are we doing? And they stuck three or four different grafts in uh, at that at that top point, uh, and all of them took. And so we have we have I think I think at least two different maybe three different varieties on on this tree from that. But is the middle grafting. the original? This is probably part of the original. Um, and then these three would be grafts that were put on when they topped it. So, so happy accident. Happy accident, yep. Well, we're here at the Persimmons. Twenty ten. Um, so these trees aren't that old. Um, when we planted them, we bought seedlings directly from Forest Keelings, planted them. We got fruit, I think, the second or third year, and the fruit was no good. No good. We were like, no, this is not going to work. We got sixty trees here with nothing good on them. So Tom brought some cyan wood from his trees. Uh, we were down at that end of the orchard, and we quite literally. Um, he showed us how to do it on one tree, a group of students, and we cut the students loose using his uh, modified tip bud uh, grafting method. Um, and we literally turned a group of students loose that had seen this happen once, uh, never grafted before, uh, done anything really, um, uh, you know, with agroforestry, and they had about a 95 plus percent success rate. So all of these trees are a result of that. Uh, of that graphic. That, that is amazing. Student participation and this is the result. Yep. And you can go back um, if you want to kind of see the, uh, the evidence of that. The, I just noticed I was here yesterday uh, with some, I had some, we had an event here on campus and we brought a group of younger kids down to have them taste some persimmon so they you can watch their face pucker up. And, <laughs> so, but I noticed that a couple of trees had, uh, you know, they had put out a sucker below the graph and we hadn't caught it and pruned it. So you can see the difference in the leaf uh, shape and style from that old variety versus the grafted variety. Um, that's a good example. I think it's just back that way. Uh, maybe uh, a couple of the trees you can't really see from here, but you can see there's no fruit on that side. Uh, the other side that's the graft is loaded uh, with really good quality fruit. So. Are these all one type? There, I believe there are two types. Okay. So Tom had two varieties in his yard, and we, we grafted both on. Um, I don't know that we kept track of which landed where. We just kind of sent them off with cyan wood, and away they went, and can't complain about the results. The persimmon is very, very easy to graft. Uh, it takes well to that. What's the commercial market? Um, I see it in Walmart sometimes, uh, but it doesn't look like this. Uh, so the varieties, uh, yeah, the, the varieties you see are going to be much more firm better for shipping and uh, having a shelf life in the store. As you can tell walking around eating these, when you get a good one, they've got to be really, really ripe, not very shelf stable. So. so this is a persimmon. What do you think? Is it an acquired taste? Excellent. Unbelievable, the productivity here. So these are all grafted varieties from Tom Waller Redfern Farm on Forest Keeling Rootstocks. Before we leave, a picture of the group, at least part of the group. We had a lot of fun in the research plot here at Indian Hills Community College, and now we're off to our last stop of the day, the chestnut farm of Jason Gradless. I have confidence that there will be a part three to the 2021 Southern Iowa Agroforestry Field Day.